how I wish I could just end the video with that. Still, I've got a job to do, so here are my initial thoughts in regards to what is hopefully the last gasp of Saban's meddling of the Precure franchise with Glitter Force Doki Doki. Yeah, apparently I was wrong about the rights issues mumbo jumbo between Toy and Saban. Toy does currently own the trademark, but before they reacquired it, Saban finished up their version of Doki Doki Precure. Toy then figured they should at least let Saban recoup their costs and let them release Claire Force. And after watching it, it becomes clear why they wanted the trademark back in the first place. Now first of all, I will nitpick stuff like name changes. This is an adaptation, so they're allowed that much. I will say it's weird that they changed some names and not others. Even though Alice and Joe had perfectly English sounding names, they were arbitrarily changed to Clara and Jonathan respectively. Meanwhile, half the fairy partners and almost all the bad guys have the same names. Consistency is all I ask for. Still, those are really minor points in the long run. I have nothing really against Makoto being called Mackenzie or Trump Kingdom, uh... Actually, you know what, the less said about that, the better. I also don't dislike the voice actors, for the most part. Yeah, I'm still not totally sold on Debbie Derryberry as Maya, I still think her Jimmy Neutron slips out every so often. But I will admit, she can sound younger and more feminine at times. I'd give her a C-, just passable. Only other awkward performance I could think of is Lance, who sounds like the nasally kid from The Simpsons. Everyone else is pretty damn good. I love Cassandra's Rachel, it's always great to hear Melissa Fawn, Belle and Sebastian sound freaking awesome. Overall, I'd say this cast is actually a step up from the previous season. The scripts themselves aren't bad either. Yeah, there are more than a few cringy lines here and there, but I do kind of find an ironic pleasure in some of it. Hell, when doing a side-by-side -side comparison, I was surprised to find how much of it were near-direct translations. Most of all, they kept in some of the more intense plot points. I was surprised they let Clara keep her traumatic backstory of her losing her temper and beating up some kids. I come from the generation where teenagers doing this was censored. If I were to look at the series based on just that, I'd call it a good adaptation and a competent show. Sadly... That was not the case, now was it? Now, as my not so subtle intro suggested, Saban, for whatever reason, be it budgetary or conforming to Netflix standards, they chopped up a bunch of episodes in Doki Doki Precure's first major story arc. How much are we talking? Well, this first set of episodes covers until the episode just before Ace's debut, so the first 21 episodes of Precure. And how many episodes are on Netflix right now? <coughs> now you might be thinking, holy crap, they skipped six episodes? And the answer is no. They only completely skipped one episode, the admittedly sort of fillerish episode 12 where Mana deals with an admirer. The rest of it was the result of them condensing a bunch of episodes by removing a very significant amount of scenes starting with the first three episodes. And being a stickler for details, I've known doubts of these major ambitions. It starts off innocently enough in episode 1 where they only removed a few inconsequential scenes like one of some students playing around, kind of foreshadowing the MOTW. Not really anything important, and it allowed a little bit of episode 2 to be squeezed in. Then we get to the actual second episode, and all of the very significant scenes they removed, including the Happy Prince scene, and everything starting from the MOTW fight. I mean, just wow. First, in the case of the latter, it completely removes Rachel's introduction to her best friend being a superheroine, and in the case of the former, it removes the introduction of one of the more significant themes of the series. <sighs> more on that later. Following this, they completely removed any scenes of Rachel's parents from episode 3, and thus condensed the first three episodes into two. Next, episode 6 of Precure, they completely removed the hilarious first half of the episode, which also includes some scenes that could have provided Mackenzie with some good character development, just so that they could stick it together with the first half of the 7th episode. And then they combined the second half of episode 7 with 8 after they removed the MLTW fight from that episode. So again, 3 episodes reduced down to 2. And then came probably the worst case of condensing when they combined episodes 14 and 15 by only using 2 scenes from 14. For those who don't remember, or are unaware, episode 14 was the Rika focused episode where she received her royal crystal after competing in a Karta tournament and befriending one of the top competitors. In Glitter Force, Rachel participates in a spelling bee off screen and then for unexplained reasons is just given her little plot device. So wait, is Gosei suddenly getting involved in this show? 
There's a simple explanation for that. Actually, here's a thought. Does Saban just hate Rika or something? I mean, so far they've mostly removed stuff from her episodes, including anything regarding her parents, and gave her the voice of the trolling space bunny. Enjoy seeing this image in your nightmares, by the way. Anyway, moving on, episodes 17 and 18 were merged into one episode of Glare Force by removing a bunch of significant scenes from them, in particular all the flashbacks that gave backstory to both Jonathan and the princess. Cause yeah, who needs characterization? Just reduce these two down to Disney archetypes that even Disney is making fun of these days. Last, they combined episodes 19 and 20 into one by reducing 19 down to just its intro and conclusion. Good gravy, there's just so much wrong here. Alright, I'm not gonna pretend like the original is a sacred tome that should not be tampered with. Doki Doki Precure had its own narrative failings, like every show does. Companies are allowed to make changes if they feel it'll result in a product of comparable quality. However, I think it's hard to make an acceptable product out of something that's been cut up and then put back together with scotch tape. Even if you ignore the fact they removed a bunch of scenes, structurally, that leaves the story flow of several individual episodes here feeling more than a little off. There's stuff here like instantly transitioning from Maya visually hesitating about revealing her secret identity to her best friend, to said best friend already examining Maya's transformation trinket and not at all being barred by the flowing bear, bunny, and dog. Or how there's one episode with two monster fights just three minutes apart from one another. Or, and I love this one, they show Regina reaching out to steal the royal crystals, and then after the opening, she already has them, as though our heroines never even put up a fight. Now you see that evil will always triumph, because good is dumb. All of this isn't helped by some shy editing that includes all sorts of awkwardly timed and sudden fadeouts. When your editing looks worse than my stuff, then you know you've screwed up. Widescreen, stupid. Widescreen. Thank you. When factoring back in the fact they took out some significant scenes, you realize they're killing off some of the stronger themes the original was built around. While I want to save talking about most of the original's plot for when I actually get around to reviewing Doki Doki Precure, I think I can at least mention what its main themes are. A major theme of the series is the importance of having both selfish and selfless tendencies. The Tale of the Happy Prince is an example of how being totally selfless will lead to literal self-destruction. Something that Maya will experience throughout the series, I mean assuming they don't cut out scenes like this. Look, I do try to judge a show by its own merits, and I do recognize that Glare Force and Precure are their own separate entities at this point, but by making scenes like these, you're kind of leaving a show without a major arcing theme, which is kind of important for most shows out there. On top of that, all of these omissions are leaving several characters rather underdeveloped. As of this first season, Jonathan and the princess lack any real backstory, while Rachel, an actual main character, has gotten the worst of it, as she's only gotten like about half an episode focused on her. It wouldn't surprise me at this point if they end up skipping her episode with Ira. No! 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 Again, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. If you enjoy the show, all the more power to you. I pointed out some of the good stuff that is here. As I said, I did kind of enjoy the cheesiness of the first Glare Force, which is still present here, and this one does have much better casting overall. But when you combine that with episodes that have been so watered down and condensed, it produces a show that even those unfamiliar with the original might find incomplete. With 28 episodes of the original remain that, by my understanding, they're gonna reduce down to another 15 for this show, I'm sorry, I just can't hold out hope for this series. Not as though I need to, as Toy holds the trademark, and whatever they end up doing with it will likely lead to a much better product than this. If you have your own opinions regarding this less than stellar adaptation, in my opinion, feel free to comment below. And until then, though, Pharaoh, for now, my friends, it's wow, why don't we take a look at Precure All Stars Deluxe 2 and hey, could you quiet down? I'm trying to do an outro here. Well, we gotta start speeding up the production of these videos a little bit more, so I figured maybe we could combine our videos just like this show. Wait your turn! Oi! Barrel for now, my friends. <laughs>